So this guitar is actually uh, an incredibly expensive custom shop masquerading as a relatively cheap Highway 1. Um, it's a weird story actually, it cost me 400 quid I think it was, um, an eBay job, bought primarily as a kind of donor guitar. Um, I work with a company called Radio Shop Pickups and these are my signature ID Chris Buck name drop uh, pickups and th when they got in touch to kind of ask me if I wanted to design some pickups with them, um, I just didn't really have any guitars that I kind of wanted to cannibalize I guess it was just you know I'm a bit of a Luddite if you know in the, if it works it works and I don't really kind of care or know what goes on underneath the hood so I just kind of went out and bought a relatively cheap Strat that I could find that kind of looked cool as much as anything else I knew that I would be happy whipping apart and it's sort of turned into my yeah, main Strat these are the prototypes the final prototypes of the pickups in there um, and it's just yeah like I said it cost me 400 quid this not a great deal of information I've been able to find out about these Highway 1s online. Um, I know they've got incredibly thin nitro finishes, hence why it's covered in a lot of things relatively quickly. Uh, the paint's very quick to chip off, but um, they just, they sound great, they're solidly built. Um, depending on what you read, they're either American parts assembled in Mexico or Mexican parts assembled in the US. Either way, they've obviously uh, Reconcile with the fact they're going to write made in the USA on the headstock, but um, yeah, it is what it is. It sounds good. It's you know plays well and kind of uh, it's a strat really. So um, working down from there onto the pedal board, I guess um, this is a relatively stripped back one for the time being. Um, the plan is hopefully make it back to that pedal show in a couple of weeks' time, put together something a little bit more uh, tour ready uh, for some dates we've got coming up. But um, from the top, I guess the first thing the guitar is seeing. Um, is this Gracetone FF01, which is a fuzz pedal all the way from Australia, uh, based on fuzz face. I've got an old Dallas Arbiter Dennis Cornell, I think it is fuzz face, um, which sounds fantastic, but is hideously impractical um, and a little temperamental to say the least. So I was kind of been on this sort of fuzz hunt for the past couple of months to try and find something that sounds relatively similar, but without the sort of um, the quirks or the idi idiosyncrasies. Um, and this sounds great, it's sort of that big fat sort of um, fuzz facey kind of thing, you know. than the not, I'll stack that with a drive pedal of some kind. I've never been a massive fan of fuzz faces in isolation. They tend to get a little bit kind of uh, straighted edge, I guess, if I want a better phrase. So I'll stack that usually with an overdrive pedal like the Strike Flash, which just sort of rounds things out a little bit. Bit more Eric Johnson y kind of thing, I guess. Um, moving on, we've got the Soraya Tone Centura. Uh, no guess is what that is meant to be. Does that kind of clon clean boost thing very well. Going into the Cali 76 compressor. A um, little bit kind of uh, lazy when it comes to that, to be honest. And more often than not, if I'm playing anything with single coils, that'll be on. It's just a little bit like a sonic yoga mat, I guess. Just makes everything feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, into the Thorpey Gunshot, great sound and overdrive pedal, more often than not using that with uh, the Revstar. Into the Tuna, into the Straight Flash, as I said, made by VS Audio out in Greece. Um, really kind of nice Blues Breaker-esque, I guess, kind of thing, but just a low gain sort of. <laughs> It 
that was that overdrive thing kind of well. Um, in the black box, made by Snouse uh, out in Denver. I do believe that's a pretty much a one for one uh, replica of an old Marshall Blues Breaker. Again, I've got an old Blues Breaker in the house, which sounds fantastic, but is, um, yeah, in worse shape than its age than I am. Um, I think it's early 90s, and that's a little bit temperamental, so this just takes the sort of uh, the quirks out of it. Sounds cool. Moving into a bit of a weird one, um, made by Hello Sailor Effects, I do believe. Um, it's a bit of a range master kind of thing, and uh, just does that kind of range master thing very nicely. It's a little bit, little bit of hair around the notes. Sounds cool. And lastly, we've got the Buna, um, Dawn Prince Buna Echo Rec kind of thing. That tends to get used uh, for a couple of specific parts in the Buck and Evans set. Uh, most notably, I guess, this is an instrumental bit um, in the middle of a track called Slow Train, which uh, sounds a little bit like this. So we've got. Does that sort of, uh, yeah, drum tape echo kind of thing. Uh, drum echo even. Um, yeah, that's pretty much everything. Oh, we've got the Supra as well, the Supra Tremolo, um, which does that sort of um, Fender brown face sort of um, harmonic tremolo thing very nicely. That sounds a little bit like this. atmosphere, a bit of sort of uh, just movement, which is quite nice. Um, on to, I guess, lastly, uh, the amp, which is the new V140 Super Duchess uh, by Victory. Um, it's the 100 watt version of the V40 Deluxe that I've been using for a couple of months now. Uh, to be honest, the more headroom, the happier I tend to be. Um, if I can get the amp really cooking without it kind of naturally uh, compressing or naturally overdriving, that's where the pedals come in for me. Um, so yeah, when I hear they were doing the 100 watt version, I was pretty chuffed. Um, great sounding reverb especially, really nice spring reverb tank in there. Um, we've got the output bias uh, tremolo as well, which to be honest, with the Supra on the board, I don't tend to get a massive amount of use out of, uh, but that's something I'm looking to incorporate at some point when I'm not lazy enough to keep forgetting to bring the foot switch for the amp with me. Um, yeah, you know, great sounding clean platform. <laughs> Bit of a monster. Um, slowly getting used to using the 2x12 cab as well. Um, be fairly used to using the 1x12 with the V40, uh, but there's that much bass and that much more kind of depth and sort of oomph, I guess, one of the better phrase of the 2x12. So getting used to that slowly. Um, yeah, 
And there we have, there we have it. I nearly forgot to mention the Yamaha Revster. Um, use this a hell of a lot. Um, it's more for the kind of rocky stuff we do with the band. Um, anything that the Strat doesn't kind of quite fit into, to be honest. Um, this particular model is the 720 uh, with the Bigsby. And they're kind of version of uh, Filtrons or whatever these are. Um, just sounds great, you know. Yeah, one thing I forgot to mention with the Rev Star is I tend to get a lot of use with this, with the Thorpey Gunshot. Um, it's just a great, you know, great little box of rock. <laughs> Does it seem? <laughs>